Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is using one of the most versatile tools as part of our survival kit, that military poncho, to learn 10 advanced survival skills with just that poncho. Stand by. All right, guys, for our first task, we're going to live dangerously, and we are going to attempt to boil water in this cheap model poncho that is a lot thinner than a traditional military poncho is. That poncho hood is tied off. We're going to grab our E-tool next and dig just a shallow bowl in the earth's surface. We're then going to grab our poncho, fold it in half, doubling up the material, and then place it over top of our bowl shape and press it down. Grab some green vegetation to line what is our bowl, and then we're just going to grab a cup and fill up the bowl with creek water. I know what you're thinking. We could just simply take that poncho, go down to the water, and then push the poncho underneath the water, grab all four corners, lift up, and gather water that way. But we're going to use the cup for demonstration's sake. Now we need to get a fire going. As our fire is built and gets hot, we're going to grab some rocks, and we're just going to toss our rocks right into that fire to cook those rocks and get them hot. Once those rocks are hot, we're going to grab a piece of bark, and we've lined the top of the bark with some dirt. That dirt is to prevent the rocks from burning through our bark, but also to prevent them from rolling off. We're going to collect up those hot rocks with some tongs and then move to our water bladder that is full. We've got that green vegetation spread out. We just add those hot rocks until we get it hot enough to where it starts boiling and makes it safe to drink. So the rock boil was our first task, and we technically did our second task already, which is create a simple water bladder with our poncho in the earth's surface, because now we can drink whenever we need to. Now we could leave this water bladder as it sits, just in that simple bowl shape that we dug out with our e-tool into the earth. However, we can pick this up and make it just a little easier for us to get that water, creating a simple quad pod. The benefits of this are that the poncho and the bladder itself with the water is up off the ground. We can scoop it easily, and then it prevents any bugs or any debris from getting into that water, contaminating it, and making it unsafe to drink. So we create a simple quad pod with improvised anchors and leaves in the poncho, raise it up, and it's good to go. Now we're going to conduct just a little experiment. With our poncho being polyester, we're going to attempt to place it over a fire, pasteurize, and maybe even boil this water. Most of the ponchos, military style, are going to be made of polyester, even the cheaper models. And they're polyester 210 tango, which means every square inch is going to have 210 threads of polyester, making it incredibly strong as well as waterproof. Polyester melts at approximately 500 degrees Fahrenheit and water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, so we should be able to boil this water. This method, any portion of the poncho that is not touching water and fire simultaneously is going to be destroyed by that fire. If we had to do this again, we create just a bowl shape similar to the one we dug in the earth. However, we were able to get a boil going inside this poncho with water, placing it over a fire. All right, for our next task, we're going to be doing some shelter. We've already done a rock boil, created a water bladder. We've done boiling over a fire and collecting rainwater. And now we're going to move on to shelter. Ponchos are traditionally used for establishing hooches or shelters. One that is more advanced is creating just a simple hammock out of a poncho. We're going to grab some one inch tubular nylon webbing out of our mountaineering kit and we're going to use those for our two anchor points. We're going to lay out this poncho diagonally, grab each far corner and simply create a wrap with our nylon webbing around those corners going back on itself and folding the edge of the poncho in toward the center, wrapping back, going through our eyelets and then creating our anchor points. We are going to do the same thing from one corner to that other quarter and create just a simple fold over and bite with our nylon webbing to create our anchor points for our hammock. With our attachment points complete, we just need to find our two anchor points. Trees will suffice. They need to be close together based on how much cordage or tubular nylon webbing we have. We simply tie around the trees, get it up as high as we need it, and then put a little weight on that hammock. Once it's going to hold our weight, we can just simply scoot into that hammock wrap up both sides and our poncho hammock is good to go. A great shelter to get up off the ground. Some free chicken for you. When we take this shelter and string it up, all we have to do is flip it over, 
stake out the two diagonal corners that are still remaining and we've created just a simple hooch now that we can get underneath for inclement weather like days like today. All right, here's another shelter idea for you. We're gonna find two poles, grab our poncho, lay out our poncho, and then grab our two poles that are approximately eight feet long, one to two inches in diameter, and place them down on top of the poncho and fold over both sides. With those sides folded over, we can now go down the buttons that are on the poncho and button those buttons together to create just a basic sleeve. And then we can take some 550 cord and tie off the grommets. With our poncho sleeve and those two poles, we've effectively created what is just an improvised litter. We could lay a casualty down on top of that poncho. Myself and another person could grab the head end and the foot end of those long eight foot poles and then stand up and carry a casualty out of the field. But we're going to create shelter instead, similar concept. And we're going to need to make a tripod. We're going to make one tripod and then one bipod and demonstrate an alternate version of this suspended shelter. For our tripod, we're just going to grab three sections of material we've already harvested. And using 550 core from a hank inside our pocket, we're just going to wrap and frap around the tripod head and then make it tight, finishing off with a clove hitch to set in place. Tripod ready, we just set it in place at what will be one end of our shelter. That bipod, we're just going to lean against a tree. That tree is going to act as the third leg for our bipod, creating what is a tripod. With the tripod set up now, we just grab the litter with the two poles and the poncho, place it up over top until it's set, swing into our shelter, and once we know it'll take our weight, and we've got our suspended shelter ready to go. All right, we've done a few shelter ideas and then a few water purification or treatment methods. Now we're gonna move on to food preservation with our poncho. We're gonna harvest a couple of longer poles off the landscape to create a tripod that will be the structure for our smoker. We're gonna create that simple tripod shape. We're gonna use a lot of zip ties for this because they're easy to use. And then we're gonna create the frame at the base of our smoker where our meat's gonna go. Then we're gonna harvest just some simple green vegetation to make our rack. Tripod complete, rack complete. We're gonna take off our rack sticks and now we're just gonna grab a poncho, drape it over top of our tripod and the hood is gonna act as the vent. Anytime we're smoking food in a survival situation, we need a lot of punk wood or wood that's gonna give off a lot of smoke. So we harvest that process and keep it next to our fire. We're gonna move our smoker and our rack with our poncho over top of our fire. It's burned down now because we're done with our rock boil, done with our poncho boil. And now we're ready to smoke some deer meat that we've had from a fresh doe kill out in the field. Cut it into strips, place it on our rack, and place it over the fire. We're gonna add our punk wood to create that smoke and begin smoking our meat to preserve it. Now we can use the ash from the fire to help clean our hands and clean our tools, go down to the creek and wash up. We're gonna leave our meat sitting in the smoker and add more punk wood as necessary. Smoking meat for six hours will help preserve it for 24 hours. The longer it sits, the longer it will be preserved. Sorry guys, I lied to you. We're gonna do another shelter demo. And this one's kind of interesting because we're gonna take our poncho and we're gonna take some tent poles that are aluminum and flexible and create just a hasty stealth shelter. With this shelter, all we have to do is take our poles, extend them, and line them up diagonally across our poncho. Hook them into the grommet at each end and create what will be a simple parabola. With all the tent poles holding in place through the grommets, now all we have to do is slide those tent poles so they cross right in the middle of our poncho and then flip the whole thing over. This is a very simple shelter to put up. That 550 cord at the grommets helps hold the poles in place. Very easy, simple stealth shelter that is lightweight, compact, that we can simply crawl under in an emergency and get out of the rain. For this next skill, I haven't done it in a while. And so we're going to take our time and try to put this together because what we're going to create is ultimately a life-saving device if we have to cross a water obstacle. Now with our poncho, we're going to lay it out flat and we're going to take that hood and we're going to pull it up through the poncho away from the exterior side or the outside of the poncho and tie it off from what is the inside of the poncho to make it 100% waterproof. And then we're going to need a lot of debris and a lot of debris. About 18 inches of standing debris needs to be on our poncho. 
With enough debris collected, it's about 18 inches standing tall at the center of our poncho, we're going to find some dead dry logs and add those as well. We're going to add multiple logs and keep them to around 3 feet in length. We have about 6 pieces of wood or logs that are going to be on top of our debris pile, roughly 3 feet in length. We've got some cravats and some cloth with us, and we're going to use that cloth to tie up the ends of the logs to prevent them from puncturing our poncho. Once we're done with all of that, we need more debris. We're going to put more debris right on top of the rest of the leaves and these logs. With our debris on our poncho center mass, about 18 inches, plus our groups of three feet of logs wrapped at the ends with our cloth and cravats, now we're ready to tie this off. We're going to start with diagonal corners, fold them up over top, and tie them together tight as we can. We're going to do opposite diagonal corners, once again covering those, and then now we can go for the center grommets to the left and right hand side, and then to the north and south of this poncho. We want to tie this as tight as we can. Now we're ready for poncho number two. We're going to pick up that first poncho with all our debris inside and move it up out of the way. Laying our second poncho flat, we're going to do the same thing we did with the first one. Reach through, tie the hood shut, and then we're going to grab that other poncho again with all the debris and logs inside. And we're going to flip it over with the tie side down on top of the hood of our second poncho. Similarly to our first poncho with all the debris and logs, we're going to tie off our second poncho the same exact way. We're going to connect the opposite corner grommets and center grommets with paracord, and we're going to tie this tight. We need to tie this as tight as possible because this is going to be the layer that acts as that waterproof layer when we actually put this into the water to help keep it buoyant. And what we have effectively created is in the survival manual known as what is called a brush raft. This brush raft with all the debris, the two ponchos, and the logs inside weighs about 15 or 20 pounds, I would guess. And now we need to test this to make sure it is buoyant and it's going to float for us and act as a raft should. We've tied it off with 550 cord, and now we're just going to get on, test our body weight to see if it will hold us and stay buoyant and upright in the water. Now this type of raft is best in situations where we have moving water, typically some sort of river or large creek that is going to be able to carry us along downstream. This is perfect for one of those situations. Unfortunately, we just have still water here in this pond, but we can still exercise and get some training value out of this situation with our brush raft we've created out of our two ponchos and then debris from the forest floor. We're just going to lay on top of that brush raft and we can simply use a frog kick as well as pulling with our hands to maneuver through the water and actually cross a water obstacle. Still good to go. Now that we're soaking wet, let's try another improvised flotation device that we can use to cross a water obstacle. And that is just a simple poncho float with all of our contents of our kit inside that poncho acting as a flotation device to get us across that water or that obstacle or moving current safely. Now this is a very simple method. We just take our gear, put it into a dry bag or a drum liner, which should be part of our kit anyway, and then simply tie it off. We're going to expel all of the air out of that bag as much as possible because we want to create what's called neutral buoyancy. We want that bag to float but we don't want it popping up out of the water on us, so we expel all the excess air we don't need. We then wrap it or twist and then tie off that bag. We're going to place it right inside of our poncho, grabbing up all the ends, twist that poncho, and then tie that poncho shut with some of the excess cordage we still have on our poncho from our raft. With our flotation device ready, we go down to the water. Again, we need to test it to make sure it's going to float, give us some buoyancy, and then we can enter the water and swim. This time it's a smaller actual flotation device, so we can maneuver that and actually get around it easily enough to get full range of motion to actually swim. Now I get a lot of questions on why I keep my clothing on when I enter a water obstacle like this and do some training like this. Often people ask me, why don't you put your clothing in your dry bag? That way you have something dry to change into on the opposite side. There are a couple of different reasons. One, tactically, if we make contact at any point during that obstacle crossing of water, if we at least have clothing on us, we have our fighting wreck, and then we obviously have our rifle to defend ourselves. We also want to keep clothing on because of subsurface obstacles. 
gives us a little bit more protection so we don't injure ourselves as we're crossing the water because we can't always see what is down in there. And then if we lose our flotation device and all our gear, we at least have what's on our pockets or what's on us to attempt to survive on the opposite side. Should we be able to make it to the opposite side safely, then we can survive. Water is incredibly important in any survival situation. And this time, instead of us going to the water, the water has come to us and we're gonna take advantage of it. Using our military poncho, we can construct a simple poncho rain catch to get hydrated. We take out our military poncho and string the four corners up between some trees in a large enough space to get our poncho spread out to collect rainwater. Turn the poncho hood inside out so it is closest to the ground and the water that drops into our poncho is going to collect in our hood. We can do up the hood just a little bit by closing the aperture of the face to get more water into the hood and then simply pull up on the back of the hood to pour that water into our canteen cup. Highly recommend boiling water like this if it touches anything, especially a dirty poncho. But this water is easily collected, put in our canteen, we can take it to a fire and boil it and drink it on demand. All right, guys, that does it for this video. I really hope you liked this video. Everything from water treatment to shelter craft to a little bit of fire as well as food preservation and even improvised and deliberate methods for crossing water obstacles safely with flotation devices. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. And I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.